Mr. President, uh, several years back, actually, it's further than several years, it was, it was in the early 1990s, there was a, a popular culture sensation in, in kids' books, and the books were entitled Where's Waldo? And those of you with uh, uh, young kids probably remember the books. It was a great way to, to test your kids' um, just eyes and, and areas of identification. Uh, this was, this was uh, uh, crafted by a gentleman by the name of Martin Hansford. You, you try to find Waldo with his glasses and his, his red and white striped hat, uh, and he'd be tucked in on the page somewhere, filled in with lots of other colors, and you'd have to, to hunt through. But more often than not, Waldo was, was tucked away behind some other similar-looking characters who would attract your attention. And, and they played a, an essential role in the overall picture, but ultimately were not Waldo. I see the young pages down here nodding. You've all seen the Where's Waldo books. Well, Mr. President, I don't want to take time here this afternoon um, talking about the Where's Waldo uh, books themselves, but I will tell you, I, I am concerned, and, and the point of my comments today is, is the concern that I have that the Obama administration has engaged in a new game of Where's Waldo and doing so with our energy policies. Only this time, instead of Where's Waldo, it's Where's Nuclear. We will need to search carefully to find where the administration has hidden the resurgence of the nuclear industry. The confluence of high oil prices this past summer and a desire to reduce harmful greenhouse gas emissions has certainly and justifiably promoted the interest in and development of renewable and alternative forms of energy. From more mature technologies like wind and solar to greater awareness of the potential for geothermal for biomass and ocean and tidal energy, along with greater energy efficiency and, and conservation measures. Congress and, and both the, the Bush administration and now the Obama administrations were active in promoting these fields, in extending the tax breaks, mandating levels of ethanol to be used, updating our energy efficiency standards, and improving or providing for incentives for energy conservation measures. We're expecting to tackle a climate change bill at some point this Congress. In what shape or form uh, certainly remains to be seen at this point in time, but uh, we know that we must work to slow and reduce our carbon emissions. And there's certainly a role for all of these technologies and increased effic energy efficiency to play in our energy future, but ultimately, as the new administration lays out its energy policy priorities, I have to ask the question, where is nuclear? In an interview with the US News and World Report, Secretary of Energy Stephen Chu says that, quote, the biggest gains in terms of decreasing the country's energy bill, the amount of carbon dioxide we put into the atmosphere, and our dependency on foreign oil will come from energy efficiency and conservation in the next 20 years, close quote. So the, our energy secretary, Secretary Chu, has basically said that when it comes to making reductions in emissions, it's going to come from energy efficiency and conservation. Well, Mr. President, I am absolutely all for conservation. But once again, nuclear power the one energy source that currently provides emissions-free, stable, baseload power, along with large-scale, high-paying job creation across the United States, seems to be missing from the Obama administration's energy plans. So what's the current state of play when it comes to nuclear? The, uh, the map behind me indicates where we have nuclear facilities throughout the nation. The, 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 chain, the colors um, are differentiate based on the years of commercial operation. The blue triangles are nuclear facilities that have been in operation for between 30 and 39 years. That's the majority of the reactors. We have 52 that have been in operation 
um, for about a 40-year period, 42 for uh, about a 20 to 29-year period. But what, what, what this map, I think, demonstrates quite clearly is not only where in the country our nuclear facilities lie, but the fact that we simply do not have any new nuclear plants that have been ordered in this country since 1978. We've got 104 operating nuclear power plants across the country. They're providing right around 20% of our electric power and approximately 75% of our carbon-free power. So again, no new nuclear plants ordered in this country since 1978. But we've seen a, a resurgence of interest that has led to license applications for 26 new reactors at 17 sites. These applications have all been doc docketed by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission with construction on the first plant expected to begin in the year 2012. And this is a very welcome revival. This comes at a time when we know our economy is suffering. At a recent State Ener uh, Senate Energy and Natural Resources Committee hearing, uh, we had the president and CEO of the Nuclear Energy Institute, Mr. Marvin Fertel, and he noted that to date, investment in new nuclear energy plants over the past two to three years has created 15,000 jobs. Now, if all 26 new reactors currently in the licensing process are built, that would result in an annual average of over 100,000 new jobs, according to a recent study by Oxford Economics. Over 20,000 long-term jobs would be generated to operate those plants. Those new jobs would allow nuclear energy to continue to make the contribution that it does today as our energy needs grow. Now we know that nuclear plants also play a key role in reducing our carbon emissions and meeting our climate change goals, while also helping to mitigate economic harm. In 2007 alone, nuclear power resulted in the avoidance of almost 700 million metric tons of carbon emissions. So how much, really, is, is 700 million metric tons of carbon emissions? It's more carbon than Canada collectively emits each year. It's roughly twice the amount of carbon emitted by all privately owned vehicles in the United States on an annual basis. So it's safe to say that nuclear power avoids a significant amount of carbon emissions. And it brings our expenses down as well. An EIA analysis of last year's Lieberman-Warner climate change legislation showed that a new nuclear plant construction would reduce carbon prices in 2030 by 33%, residential electricity prices by 20%, and a residential natural gas prices by 19% compared to a scenario where new nuclear construction is limited. And not only is, is nuclear emission free, nuclear also provides a constant, reliable source of base power. And this is an issue that, that we, we hear time and time again in the Energy Committee, an issue that renewable and alternative energy sources, as much as we like them, but they, they struggle with this reality of reliable baseload. After all, uh, we certainly know, regardless of what part of the country you're from, the sun doesn't always shine, the wind doesn't always blow. On the other hand, in 2008, the average operating capacity for the 104 nuclear plants in the United States was over 90%, well above that of, of coal-fired power generation. So if you look at the chart here, nuclear continues to provide, in terms of, of the, the capacity factor and what they can provide on a sustainable, reliable basis, you've got nuclear coal coming in a, a good second. But, but as we look to wind, hydro, solar, even oil and gas, if, if what we're looking for is a level of, of reliability, um, what we're looking, the answer there truly is, is nuclear. It's the type of dependable power that our utilities need to operate efficiently and effectively. 
This year's Gallup environmental poll shows 59% of Americans support the use of nuclear power, which is a new high. But support for nuclear is nothing new in the international community. Since 1978, when the last nuclear reactor was ordered in the United States, over 250 new reactors were constructed overseas. Japan intends to increase the amount of electricity it gets from nuclear from where they are today at 30% to increasing it to over 40% by the year 2020. France already gets 75% of its electricity from nuclear. So I think, Mr. President, the American people get it, and, and the international community certainly gets it. Nuclear power is a broadly accepted form of safe energy, and it's time that we here in Washington understood this as well. It's clear that nuclear provides good-paying jobs here at home, reduces our carbon emissions, provide reliable baseload power, and it's supported by the American people. So what's not clear is where the new administration is on nuclear. And while there has been some mention about nuclear energy being part of the overall energy strategy, the actions of the administrations do not support the claim. So far, the administration has sought to kill Yucca Mountain as a long-term repository for spent fuel. They've shown an unwillingness to increase the loan guarantee program and the funding levels to support the construction of new nuclear plants. And they have focused on renewable and alternative fuel developments to reduce our carbon emissions without any mention of nuclear energy. So where nuclear energy truly stands with the current administration is a bit of a mystery to me. Let's talk about Yucca Mountain. The administration seems to view Yucca Mountain in the same vein as the Guantanamo Bay prison. Both are politically uncomfortable solutions to a toxic problem, and they're going to be shut down, never mind that we don't have an alternative plan for either one of them. So just what are we going to do with the thousands of tons of spent nuclear fuel and defense-related high-level waste that spread out all across the country? That map that you saw earlier with all of those dots all across the country. That's where we're keeping the nuclear waste there. It's sitting right there, spread out across this country. So how many tens of billions of dollars in liability will the American taxpayers be on the hook for when the administration finally abandons all the hope of fulfilling the Nuclear Waste Policy Act's already well past deadline for a permanent repository? Mr. President, billions of dollars have been spent over the last 25 years in characterization and engineering development for the Yucca Mountain license. It's hard to imagine a better understood piece of real estate on the planet. On-site dry cask storage is a safe but a temporary solution, and it does not remove the need for a permanent repository. And in the meantime, the nuclear industry faces uncertainty regarding spent fuel liabilities. States have no permanent disposition path for defense-related wastes. And the federal government cannot address tens of billions of dollars in taxpayer liabilities. So far, the alternative plan seems to be to leave the waste at its current location, and we'll talk about it. I mentioned the loan guarantee program. The administration seems to be just as confused about its support for the new reactor construction needed to just maintain nuclear energy's current contribution. As part of the 2005 Energy Policy Act, Congress created the loan guarantee program to help us develop the 21st century energy system that our country needs. The loan guarantee program provides support for a broad portfolio of clean energy technologies, from energy efficiency and renewable energy systems to pollution control and vehicle technology used to advance nuclear and, and carbon capture projects. It's a widely popular program. Despite the current limitation of $42 billion for the program, the Department of Energy has received applications for over $120 billion in new projects. Now, of the $42 billion for the overall program, $18.5 billion was made available for the new nuclear technology. 
over $93 billion in support has been requested. So you've got 18.5 that's made available for the new nuclear technology, but $93 billion has been requested. It's oversubscribed by a factor of five. You see on, on this chart here, $93 billion has been requested, 18 and a half available. The others, the renewable, uh, uh, renewable funds, fossil, front end nuclear mixed. When you look at what we had intended with the, with the loan guarantee program and how we envisioned that would move forward, I think we clearly underestimated where that support would be for, for the nuclear programs. It's important to note that the, the loan guarantee program is also entirely self-funded and does not represent a handout to the industry and does not expose the taxpayer to default risks. The total loan volume for the program is established by the Appropriations Committee, but any potential defaults are covered by fees paid by the applicants, not by the taxpayer. So the industry does get the help, the assistance, that backstop, if you will, of the loan guarantee from the federal government, but they pay for it. Seems reasonable. During debate on the stimulus bill, there was a $50 billion increase in the size of the loan guarantee program that was sought. Again, this is a $42 billion program with $120 billion in application requests. But increasing the size of the program authority was shot down uh, several months back because of fears that construction of new nuclear plants would take up the bulk of the loan guarantee authority. So where was the administration's support for the loan guarantee program during this debate? This program helps all forms of clean energy technologies, but this increase was denied because nuclear was in the mix. Mr. President, for 10 years now, we've heard consistently about the urgency of global climate change, the need to address it, and I agree, there is clearly evidence of climate change. I, I see the real life impacts in my state of Alaska. But I do find it inconsistent, more than a little bit inconsistent, that the same entities who would press for immediate action would deny nuclear a role in the solution. Perhaps the current administration feels that global climate change isn't as important as developing a centrally planned electrical system based on renewable energy that the administration feels is in the best interest of the public. Renewable energy sources will be important and deserve solid support. But as you can see from this chart, and I apologize because it's very, very busy, but we could double, we could double the amount of electricity produced by renewable resources, and it still wouldn't equal what we currently receive from nuclear power. So if you look at our nuclear electric power, 100% of nuclear power goes to generation of electricity. 21% of the sector creates our electric power here. Looking up to renewable energy and the, the, how they feed into um, consumption, whether it's transportation, industrial, residential, or uh, or, and commercial, or electric. If we were to increase double our renewable energy, again, we still don't come close to what we are able to provide currently with nuclear. So going back to the issue of climate change, I think it's important to ask the question as to whether this issue of climate change can really wait for renewables to develop to such a scale that they will become the primary source of energy. The point that I want to, to leave uh, folks with is that we need to be advancing all technologies equitably. Nuclear energy is the most robust form of non-emitting base load power that we have available to us, bar none. Over the last 20 years, the industry has demonstrated its ability to operate these reactors efficiently and safely to the great benefit of our country. Mr. President, I, I mentioned it earlier, but the rest of the world gets it, the American public gets it, but where, where is the administration on nuclear? It, the time 
to demonstrate our resolve for new nuclear energy development is now. We as a nation cannot afford additional delay if we're truly serious about how we reduce our carbon emissions while maintaining access to affordable energy. It's time for the administration to come forward with its plan for the inclusion of nuclear power in its overall energy policy and what it intends to do with existing and future spent nuclear fuel. We shouldn't be left standing here asking, where's nuclear?